Mago is an independent record company, and which means we, I, that's basically me, manufacture and distribute recordings of music and in both physical and digital formats. And it was started about 25 years ago in 1995. And why we started it was mainly because, like many people who start labels, it's because you didn't have any other a platform to release your own music. And that was it. And it, we started and it just carried on. And since about, since 2005, I've been the only person doing it. No. That's what most people do start labels to do. I mean, most labels, if you look at classic independent labels, the majority are set up by people who are also musicians or artists and just want to find somewhere to put their own records out. Now then what happens then, usually those artists end up doing records for bigger labels or carry on in different formats and, don't, and stop doing their own label. But for some reason, I just carried on doing labels because I'm also not even though I do music, I've also been fascinated with labels since I was a teenager, since I was started to buy music. I was actually collecting records which were on labels as well as records by my favourite artists. So I've always been into, into labels and the concepts of catalogues and, and, and catalogue numbers and archives and all these sort of things, which leads us to this being in the museum, which is a perfect place because I believe a label is actually an archive and should be archived in such a place like this. So kind of uh, label shows you have at museums just have like all the record covers, which is fair enough, you know, that's, 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 that's all part of it. But I like the idea of it being this kind of quite almost abstract, the way it was presented. It was just like, here it is, it's 15 days or how long of it is of, of, of audio and you sit down and listen to it and you don't really know what you're listening to, even though it does say on the wall what you're listening to, but you don't know what you're listening to. So it's kind of like why I like electronic and experimental music is, that, is actually not knowing what's going on. So that, that when Luca told me this concept, I thought, yeah, this is perfect. Because we could have actually had a massive sort of display of every single artwork and a big catalog this thick with every single booklet, but then that would have been, there's other places for that. There's actually the internet that does that. You can go online to the website or to the Bandcamp page and you can see every single cover and every single text about each record. So you can, if you want to really interested in, in the label, you can actually find all that. But the idea of going into a room and just hearing all this music, which is kind of randomly played back at you, so you don't really know what you're listening to. You don't really know what this is. So you could be listening to some really extreme, abstract, avant-garde noise music or something quite melodic and nice, depending on what well, your luck. You kind of roll the dice. To sort of, so, we, so I like that idea of it not being like this big sort of, you know, undescribable mass of data. I mean, I listen to music all the time. There's always something on. And I mean, I do get lots of, uh, I mean, most of the time in, in, in the working day, if you're running a label, what you're doing is listening to stuff you're going to release, listening to the stuff you have to listen to, but you probably won't release anyway, i.e. demos, and just checking things. And, uh, and, then, and when I do start, start getting interesting recording, uh, some recordings by somebody, I listen to that over and over and over again, you know, and listen to it. And then I make my decision, am I gonna put this out? What kind of format? How should we put this out? So basically I listen to the stuff we, we work on, you know. And then when I do listen to music on my own, which is not with the, with the label, it's usually the stuff I used to listen to when I was a, you know, a teenager. You know, I don't really keep that much up with new music, even though I do enough, many friends who have labels and I do, you know, shop for records and stuff. But, but I generally listen to things whilst working, but then when I do want to listen to something, I listen to something more concentrated. So there's a difference. There's a difference between having something on whilst you're working, which is not really listening, it's just, you know, becomes 
ambience for the for background and there's mu listening to listen to, to the music phys you know concentrated N once I have a ritual I mean uh, sit in a chair maybe <laughs> have a cup of tea or something with it you know that that's it that's it really but uh, but I like to listen to music at home. I, in fact, I prefer music at home, you know, even though live concerts are nice and great and clubs are great and all this, I still think it's, it's good to have it in your own personal zone. I mean, it's just kind of weird because even though I'm a musician, I don't really, I mean, I'm going to have to actually say it, not, I wouldn't say I don't like musicians, but I don't like, I don't, the concept of watching music is always, I've always found a bit strange. When, when I was a teenager going to concerts for the first time, I always thought the best groups, the groups I liked the most were the ones when the guy's just playing a black box or I don't know what it was, a synthesizer or a tape echo machine or something. I liked this kind of like, what is it? You, know, you didn't know really what it was. If you saw someone play guitar, you go, oh, he's playing guitar and he's playing piano. That's, you know, and I found that boring. So that's kind of why I like to listen to and release elect experimental electronic music because it's not really traditional music, so to say. Not to say none of my artists aren't musicians or anything. That's not. But it's 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 uh, that's what I've always been interested in. This kind of like the very abstract, the slightly off off the wall kind of stuff. And I think sort of, and I find you can do that more when you're on your own. You know. I mean, so I always make a sort of point of meeting them or I, I mean, recently it hasn't really been the case because, you know, we haven't been able to go anywhere. It's a mixture of two things. Sometimes I actually f find somebody who's been active somewhere and I ask them, do you want to do something? Sometimes people who I've known for many years contact me and I go, oh, OK, that's nice for you to get in touch. I release your record. Sometimes I try and track down people I've known for many years or, and, and I'm a fan of and I, and, I, and I approach them. I mean, in the early days, people who were reaching out to us didn't know, were reaching out to us because they knew there was a, some interesting label from Vienna and they would reach out to us. So a lot of the early acts did that, like Farmer's Manual, Fenes, Florian Hecker, all these kind of people, they reached out to me and that's how I got in touch with them. And recently, yeah, I still, I mean, I do listen to demos. I know I always go on about how I don't, but I do, you know, react to some things that get sent to me. Last year was um, a good, good case in question was when uh, this uh, young artist from Nairobi, Kenya, uh, KMRU, sent me his demo. And it was just as the pandemic was hitting and that ended up being my soundtrack for the first weeks of the pandemic. And then I said, okay, let's do a record. And then that's now become very, you know, successful, and so it's it's yeah it, it varies and stuff. But at the moment, I've got so many strands of people I work with who often want to give me things, and all the different sub labels, all the different acts. It's 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 kind of I don't really. It's quite overwhelming about you know. I mean, I always have at least twenty productions planned, in various forms, various states of you know readiness. So it's not really, you know, at, the, at any given time, I'm not really looking for anything, you know? <laughs> you know, I'm not going, oh shit, we haven't got anything to put out this week, you know, but it's, it's uh, but I do engage in, you know, new music and watch out for things and stuff. And, and if I like somebody, I might ask them, do you want to do something? But generally there's enough people surrounded by the label, which, you know, it carries on. But, to answer your question, who, what gets on the label, I don't really know. I have to like it, basically. And I think the only person who likes all of it is probably me. You know, so it's, it's uh, I don't really know. You know. And there's many people who do send me demos and they send me, and the biggest mistake they can ever make if they're listening to this is uh, they, write a, they write a little letter and say how great they like the label and all this, and they're all very good. And they're big fans of the label and stuff. And then they say, I make music which sounds like, and then they rattle off some names which I've already released. Now this doesn't, they might, they might think that's good because maybe, oh, he's, but the thing is, I'm not really interested in something sounding like Hecker or sounding like Fenice because I've already released those people. No, no, I'd like to release something that sounds like you. And, you know, so don't tell me what you sound like. I don't want to know, you know, I mean, you know, and it's, it's but they do. I mean, I, know, I mean, they're trying hard. I mean, and, and, and all I can say to people who send demos is like, do a label yourself, just do it yourself. Find some friends, get some money together. I mean, nowadays with 
digital platforms like Bandcamp, you can easily make your your music and your art available to a wider audience quite quickly. Back in the, you know, when we started, there wasn't really the internet. There was nothing, you know. So, so it's just do it yourself. That's what we did. I mean, I, I never sent a demo in my life to anybody. You know, if you're confident about, if you're confident enough to send a big long email about your work to somebody as a complete stranger, then you should be confident enough to actually phone up a pressing plant or a manufacturing place to make your record, and that's it. And uh, okay, it's a big leap of faith. You might have to spend some money, which you might not get back, but you know, why not? But, but it would still go on, yes. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's, I mean, I mean so for, for labels, it wasn't as bad as, uh, as we thought it would be, you know, because, because doing a label isn't just, isn't so much based on being physically in someone's place. Whereas doing a concert, you have to physically be there to sort of, you know, so that's the, that was the problem. I mean, and, and as I, I mean, as you know, I'm based in Vienna, but hardly anyone I release is actually from Vienna. So it didn't really matter if I'm speaking to all my artists. I mean, I, I, I don't meet them anyway, really. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and then funny enough, I was stuck in Berlin for the first of the, the start of the lockdown, where they all do live. So I ended up did meet, I met more people in lockdown than I did before as a label. So yeah, it's all upside down, basically. It's topsy-turvy, you know. That's the history of the label, you know.